and gentlemen, are you ready for Spoken and Heard open mic here at Kick Buck Coffee in Austin, Texas? I'm Arnie Gee, and here's your host, Element 615, Lots of Thought, and the Hot Tamale. Hey, what's happening, Kick Buck? You're about to witness the best, the baddest open mic in the ATX, Spoken and Heard live every Sunday night at Kick Buck Coffee. Coffee, Music, and Booze. That's right, people. This is not your ordinary coffee shop. We do have a full bar. Case in point, meet my Almond Joyous. It has three liquors, milkshake mix, almond milk, and whipped cream. Guaranteed to make you feel good by the time you get to the bottom of the cup. And I'm not... And I think Alex put a little more in mine because I'm already feeling good. <laughs> anyway, and what are you drinking, Lost in Thought? Would you please talk? Would you eventually <laughs> say something? Talk. I am drinking what's called Slammer's Ectoplasm. Ooh, for you Ghostbusters fans out there. I don't know what it is, but it's called Slimer's Ectoplasm. It's on the menu. It's like some banana stuff and kiwi, and that's all I know because I just glanced at the recipe. And it makes it green. Ooh. Okay. I had a friend down at the valley that used to call him Slimer. I don't because he was like like he, he was like Slimer. He was a little Ernie, this party, come on. <laughs> he talked like that for real. You know, I had a dream once where I oh, ate God. Slimer. This is scary. And just to let you know, the drink specials are Bloody Mary, Mimosa, and Summer Hells, all three dollars. Oh hell. Exactly. Yeah. You know, if you're gonna be talking about summer in Texas, you gotta say, oh hell. Exactly. You're gonna roast your ass off. Mm -hmm. So go over to Alex, give her a couple dead presidents. Don't forget to stuff the tip jar and she will hook you up. So, if you want to come over to get on the stage, sing, dance, act, pantomime, soliloquy, I don't know where I'm going with this. Pantomime? Come over to Element 615. What's pantomime? Lost in thought in the... That's for your hair. It's, I, I, I can't exactly call that a wife beater because it's too much shirt. Uh, Lost in thought, me, Hot Tamale, or Ernie hey. B behind the soundboard. Come over to Ernie B just so he can say... Don't bother me. He's we only, love you, Ernie B. He wants a nice, creepy pedophile hug. Go over and give him one. All right, so, Element, with your sonic screwdriver, can you initiate me to start this show? Normally, I don't do this type of thing, but... Uh, you know you're into it. Ooh, baby, give it to me. Ooh. What is that? What is that? Wait, wait, do it again. I'm almost there. Hold on, hold on. Do it again. Hold on, hold on. Woo! There you go. There you go. Ah. Just I'm, I'm tingling all over in my you. naughty bits. All right, so, and, and that's where he goes. <laughs> so to start off the show, we have the Pied Piper of Poetry, the Mad Max of Merch, the sexiest Gemini south of the equator. We got Tom O'Joy and anybody else he wants to bring up. These are the dark days of August. 100 degrees every day. That's why we're inside with the air conditioning. And many a soul and after has often said, what's the point of expressing? If most people are plugged in the matrix and the grid, when the grid goes down, your back is flat, you're gonna have to come back to the kick butt to be spoken and heard. The word. Not just the simple consumption like a TV program, but the actual articulation of the times we find ourselves in now are solutions and panaceas. You see, the remedy is inside this DNA. And out there, the whales and dolphins are waiting for us to actually wake up and start to listen to us and start to play. This is what they say. I'll see you when the dreams come into view. When you leave your screams behind you and tune into the ears inside you and the third ears start to say Didn't I see you at the kick butt not just consuming that alcohol but actually producing a little bit of a vision that everyone else could actually believe in and participate in? Not just sitting down the back of the room but actually being part of the antidote to the gloom the ennui and the depression that stops all free expression when our eyes are hypnotized by the screens in front of us and our dreams get smaller every day they no longer fit into the smartphone in the back of our pockets. I, 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 iPhone, I, 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 iPad, I, 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 it's all. There's a whole lot of vowels out there. 
like you. Oh, and you know quite well, it's a continental heaven over hell. And while we're here, we actually TJ two more letters we say. What do we got? We got each other. Now I know every one of you is going to feel like a jigsaw piece. You're going to fit into the fabric of the evening just like a tapestry. Whether it be Persian or Afghani, can you imagine the poets of Palestine sitting around this evening, around the campfire the evening? And the poets of Afghanistan, the Rumi, the Hafiz, the Leila, the Mirabai, all the mystics of the kickback coffee shop sit around and they know why. We have to gather because yesterday in Gibbons Park, 100 degrees, the start of the new movement, the idea was no more killing. How many more children? have to be blown away on the streets of Ferguson, Gaza, before we say, stop, brother. Don't shoot me. I got my hands in the air. I surrender. I surrender easily. And I say, may peace and poetry and music and art prevail today so we don't have to conflict over things we feel and things we say. There's no uniform, no guns, no drums, no, no drones, no nothing going off except your ideas inside the back of your head saying I can do better than that. And you will, because this is two four-letter words. The first one's open, the second one's mic. The first one's kick, the second is butt. And this is your life on a Sunday night, one tiny, unique little sailing boat where everybody's rowing with their own particular idiosyncrasies. There's nowhere else to be except where you are. Don't get distracted by the hypnotic screen. That apple is a half-eaten dream. And you're not just part of that programming. So unplug the corporate and wait till Monday morning. You'll be back to school. Right now you're dreaming with a whole lot of wonderful, beautiful fellow sentient sailors. Good evening. That almond joy is tastes good. Oh, drive by. Wait, wait, wait. What? Did you know our feature's here tonight? She is? Yes. Well, In fact, <laughs> tell me later. It's not who? surprised the feature actually showed up. Jess. I know. Jess. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> who is it? Who is indeed? Who is it? What? Okay. Where are you going? No. Oh, God. Hey, Mallory. You're not supposed to do that. Yo, yo. <laughs> Mallory is our feature. Mallory Gray is our feature tonight. He hasn't learned the rules yet. I'm sorry. I, I got. I got to send him back to pre-K. You know, he has to learn how to stack his blocks the right way. Cause God knows. All right. I'm still learning. I know. Go away now. Okay. So yes, that is our feature tonight. Mallory, get your singles ready. No, it's not for her garter belt. It is for her tip jar. Yes, this is a tip jar feature. So coming up, and there, there it is. Look. Maybe she can put the show, tip jar on her belt. Lost in thought. Show the sexy tip jar. Ouch. Yeah. We could actually belt it if you want. Put it right yeah, there. Put and the hang, hang it by the belt. handle and go. Woo! Thank you. That'll work. Not you. Anyway. <laughs> we we so, want you to go in. That's a coming up next to the stage. We have the Hep Cat himself. He just looks. Too slick and too dangerous, like I told him when he came in. I don't know what to do with him. Give it up for Jack Henry! What's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> Hi! A short interlude. I'm wearing sunglasses at night so I can see into the abyss. Oh. I see something and nothingness, if you can picture this. It's a song.
So this this goes out to a friend of mine who I haven't uh, seen in a while. He's not here tonight. I was kind of hoping he would surprise me. Think I started something, did didn't I get what I wanted? Didn't I? Stanley Kubrick. Blame it on the model brow with the Hollywood smile. Ha ha. Strip a booty in a rack like wow.
Yes, but he just looks so seriously slick. You need to give him a hug when he was when he goes back to his chair. You know, just just like kind of like I was telling you, you need to give Ernie B some creepy pedophile-like hugs. Well, Jack needs the same too. So, all right, coming up next to the stage, we have the talented Misty Rose. Ice Blue, I thought I'd segue right into my poem that's named Ice Blue. And we had all these three digit, hundred days here. But I remember being in Owasso, uh, that's where I'm from, but visiting up in Alaska, flying in a helicopter over the glaciers and then being on a boat and you can actually hear them popping. So let me bring you up to the glaciers and a little bit more with Ice Blue. Chopping blades cross the snow fog sound. No silence pierces the womb of swirling mist. December bursts the former first sight of oscillating ice. It must sense the stream that incessantly carries it on its back. No fleeting crush creased this countenance. Shoulders of strewn boulders were cast aside. Precipices yawn and fall into their deep sleep and then awaken from under those steady, sleepy northern lights. Encapsulated microorganisms of life are ready for the icicle drip to spread their genes open to rejuvenation when the season is set to form their own landscape. Slow moving glacier ever progressing, river of crystal clarity of intentions Gears shift from a neutral shy, then overshift to overdrive, an aquamarine flow that will not absorb a putrid shaded lubricant sky. Then throat rumblings rise in response to the persistent press of a pure embrace that would not leave, but could retreat or make this its preferred, perhaps permanent place. Shrugging off the snow that would chase its resolve at the edge of calamity to the snap crackle pop sounds that echo across the milky blow bowl of liquid from the falling in of resistance at that ice crystal fortress of solitude begins the ripple of a wave that steadily swells. <laughs> Name. It makes me think of like a greeting card or something, something in like Sounds a card. Sounds like that right? song that Cinderella had, Gypsy Rose. Not well, Gypsy Rose. I was thinking Gypsy about Misty Rose? Blue. I'm kind of a '70s kid. What can I say? Yes. Who, whoever, whoever gave me a high fist. Woo! Thank you. I can't. I'm kind of nearsighted. I can't I heard see one very much. Out there. Yeah. Woo! There wasn't like a hoo, hoo, hoo. That's very 90s. No, that's Sorry, I'm not going there. Nope, 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 nope. I am not a child of the 90s. Uh, so parts of that were very embarrassing. Okay, so coming up next, dare I say, lost in thought, we have a new voice. New voice. Listen, oh. What? Nothing. <laughs> this is what we get when we get our very talented sound engineer to try and make a comment. He's like, I did it. No, I thought you were going to bring lost in thought up. No, I was going to say, listen. No, no, no. I, thought, I was going to say, listen at your own risk, but never mind. Yeah, well. I'll just take all that back. Maybe be some dog. Okay, yeah, you, you can say that later when I bring him up. Okay. Coming up next, our new voice. Give it up for Valerie. <laughs> adored her. But behind her brigade of success, 
this golden girl had a dark secret. She'd made a mistake shared by millions. She fell in love with the wrong person. She opens her book by saying, if you and I met at one of our children's birthday parties in the hallway at work or at a neighbor's barbecue, you'd never guess my secret. That as a young woman, I fell in love <coughs> and married a man who beat me regularly and nearly killed me. I didn't look the part. I have an MBA, an undergraduate degree from Ivy League schools. I live in a red brick house on a tree-lined street in one of the prettiest neighborhoods in Washington, D.C. I've got 15 years of marketing experience at Fortune 500 companies and a best-selling book about motherhood to my name. A smart, loyal husband with a sexy gap in his front teeth, a softie who puts out food for stray kittens in our alley, three rambunctious, well-loved children. So I'm going to read a few scenes from her book that she writes really well. She worked at Seventeen Magazine in New York. And let's see. This is one of the really gripping scenes in the book. <clears throat> Suddenly the house fell unexpectedly quiet. Connor burst into my office dripping wet, wrapping a blue towel around his waist, hunched over the computer. I froze. He grabbed my shoulder and turned my body to face his. His skin was stretched tight across his cheeks. My heart seized as if I stumbled upon a snake on the path behind our house. I saw the pink blur of his hand as he slapped me hard across my face. His skin stung as my teeth cut through the soft, wet flesh of my mouth. His head jerked back. Connor grabbed my throat, pushed me up against the wall, and tightened his grip. He shook my whole body back and forth. Don't scream like that. He spit through clenched teeth. With every word, my head hit the office wall, my neck bending like a Gumby doll. <clears throat> I couldn't take my eyes off his face. I could smell his shaving cream, but I could not breathe. My mother screams like that, he said. Don't ever scream like that again, he said, as if begging me. He pushed me to the floor and left the room. The front of my flannel gown was wet from his body. I'm skipping to another part, another paragraph. I came to the library to conduct research. <clears throat> Some people believe abused women provoke the violence from their spouses. Not true. I had conducted my own experiments. Nothing I did made Connor hit me. Nothing I did make him stop. He acted like he knew what he was doing. I was sure he had other girlfriends before. All the statistics were about women. Why wasn't any research done on men who became abusers? Did the world think violence in a relationship was the woman's fault? Because she caused it? Because she stayed? I had heard the question a million times. Why would anyone stay, any woman stay in a violent relationship? <clears throat> As if only someone really stupid or with utterly no self-respect would take that kind of abuse repeatedly. A single point from the books made sense. Most abusive men tried to isolate their partners in order to prevent them from leaving. Was that why Connor had wanted us to move to Vermont? To get me away from New York where I had friends, neighbors, coworkers? One chapter had warned that the most perilous time in an abused woman's life was when she decided to leave because her abuser had nothing to lose by killing her then. Any mental health professional who assumed I was fine, who couldn't sense the danger I was in, who tried to invalidate my panic, who thought a tranquilizer would help, did not know much more about domestic violence than those idiotic books. I was alone. Again. Damn it. It's called Crazy Love. Valerie. I 
ended when the music did. I rock. No, just kidding. <laughs> Seriously. But coming up next, I am bringing to the stage not only one of my fellow hosts, I refuse to say co-host because we are all a part of this little tiny uh, shotgun shack we call Spoken Unheard. No, just kidding. Shotgun shack. Yeah, no, just, no, no. I'm sure Mr. Goring will appreciate that. I'm not that. talking about the building us. I'm talking mm -hmm. about us. You know, I'm not going to... Shut up! Okay, I'm talking about the people that make up the spoken and heard hosting machine. So what are you trying to say? We're we're like a we're like a hoopty. We're like a we're like a pinto with like a red door that the rest of the body is green. Pinto, but I love them. Pin, pinto bean. Or, or we're like a dodge dart with the steering wheel off. But get um, on with it. Get on with it. Uh, this particular host. Really, seriously, and this is just in between you and me, and yes, he's here, and no, I'm not kissing his ass. I really admire this particular poet because he can, he can, he writes a new poem once a week when he announces this venue, when he announces for Spoken and Heard, and if you are fortunate enough to be his friend on Facebook, read those poems. They're just so tactile, so full of feeling and emotion, and it's almost like texture that you're just like, how do you come up with this? I mean, me, I have to either be like super happy or super depressed, and he just goes, two-page poem. I don't know how he does it. But to this day, it's still blowing my mind. So greet him as well. Give it up for Lost in Thought. You better be good after all that. <laughs> Thank you. Am I right? Am I blushing? Are you blushing? It's, it's the lighting. <laughs> it's pink. Is it? Okay. No, it's not. It's little tiny bit. Okay. Well, this is new shit. New, new shit. <laughs> he carries himself forward in his walker, while the bottom half of his body angles from left to right as he brings himself closer to the bar stool. He rests his hands on the countertop, and after he tells the waitress his order, he awkwardly shifts his eyes in our direction, and a desperate smile presses itself upward on the right side of his mouth. While leaning forward, a shy fire assumes his face and cradles it with a quiet impatience that's got the escaping wounds of frantic laughter passing through his lips like shattered pieces of, favor of a favorite memento, as if there was a time where he used his laugh for far more genuine concerns. We talked about people that are born here in Austin. And with that, he Tommy guns his voice with the soft and with soft and reckless bullets, insisting that he was born here. And like a small toddler with magic and wonder twinkling through their sudden and steadfast excitement, power drilling, forced constellations, and the clumsy structures of new thoughts floating up through the seemingly limitless skylines hidden in that part of our young minds before the subconscious knows to separate itself from the conscious. He's up and out of his chair and stabbing the legs of his walker with short gasps into the floor. He hands out his name as if he's already compromised the sound of its meaning for anyone with time enough and willingness to care. And it stifles at the edge of his voice, falling with a thud, with a dull thud on the now shapeless syllables that are blurred shots of spent memory. After a few short words crumble out from his mouth, he proceeds to point to his necklace, a religious cross stained in the foolhardy beliefs he's held close enough to keep himself company to shadows and fleeting moments of passers by, then tells us that this is all we need. That this is the answer that will keep us in hope for serenity while waiting between the moments. Even though talk of God never approached the conversation at hand, he still holds the, the entity out as if this was the very centerpiece of everything we were speaking of. Perhaps he wanted to use his own judgment of theory as a more perverse form of pontifical masturbation. Or maybe he was just a desperate soul using the only piece of talk he knew as a way to buy himself a place at our table or merely a kind and gentle man that finds ways to connect the last remaining fringes of destitute 
collapsing from inside him like all those constellations of wonder losing grip on faith. Whatever the case may be, when does, there, when does the transparency of loneliness begin to give way to frantic assaults on the expected decency of manners? Is it better to risk insult to injury? Then again, how many of us are guilty of even moments of putting our own convictions on sale just for a spot at what we perceive to be the cool kids' table? Like this, though. Oh, God. That's a lazy, that's a, that's a poor man's Charleston. What? I'll tell you later. Okay, so coming up next, I believe we have another new voice. I thought I smelled something. I know. That new voice smell. It's just rank in here with new voice. Ripe with new voice. The forest is ripe with new voice. It's a professional voice. scent. <laughs> so, might I prevent this? No, sorry, not prevent. Prevent. Present, yes. Prevent this ex from poet from coming up. You gotta tackle him like a linebacker. Yeah, it. It's a new part of the show. Okay, so, we are presenting this. Full contact thing. poetry. We're presenting this new voice now. He's coming up to the stage, and his name is Robert. <laughs> I wore this shirt so that everybody would pay attention to me. I like the psychedelic cat, man. Thank you. It's very trippy. I figured I would trip some people out. Anyway. I thought that was just me. I like to drink a lot, and I like to just get drunk and write shit, you know? What? <laughs> no way. So, this one is called Love? With a question mark. I'm not unsure about the poem. But, uh, okay. With her lips pressed against mine, I possess her heart at this moment in time. We lock hands and gaze up to the skies. We see a trillion stars with twinkles in their eyes. Because the stars have seen it all, they've seen men take a knee and women fall. But I'm a different breed and they can see. I bought no ring and I won't take a knee. The stars and I know to get what's good. To get what's good, you must be sly. For the stars are perverts, and so am I. So I'll never put a ring on her left hand, but I'll set her heart on this one night stand. Uh, I also used to be a youth leader at my hometown. <laughs> Crazy enough, right? And so uh, this uh, next poem is about a preacher in the desert. It's pretty short. A triangle of treasures do they suppose, quietly creeping as my eyes do close. A feather falls and meets the rays, hand in hand caress my face. A lesson in scarcity does the desert teach, and my parched tongue may no longer preach. So as I breathe my final breath into the sky, to my dismay three vultures fly. <laughs> New voice, Robert! Yeah. There's some kicking Ryan poetry. Alright, so coming up next, we actually, this voice coming up, I haven't seen in a very, very, very long while. We are very long. How long? Like, like this long. All right, we are glad to have him back coming up next. We have Gentle. All right. Hey, listen. Listen, I, I can't. 
can't speak for any of you, but I grew up uh, with like some very conservative parents, right? So I wrote a poem about my mama, and this is called My Mama. My mama used to always say, screw your principles. To which I used to always say, I will, if and they'll have me. Because in my day and age, Jamel could simply knock it laid and pity that lad thrice if it needs to say. Cause all the good ones wanted was those boys so often haunted with that phantom I call stupid or sometimes simply dumb as dirt. But I always forgive them because someday just might find one down and out and just so happen she be looking for dessert. And you know I'm always ready like a skinny puppy teddy because even down and out, they shall sure look fine. <laughs> but getting back to mama, and despite my lifelong trauma with the lady, she's the one that I love first. So if, like me, you're lacking that which eases hearts romantic, just remember what's important, and thank God for prostitutes. <laughs> and don't you dare forget your mama, cause she brought you into being. And praise great God Almighty, because that's the only thing by which true life doth constitutes. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful stream of consciousness by Gentle. Hmm. Hmm. I'm doing stuff on. Okay. For a second, I thought you were saying things that make you go. <laughs> no, no, I'm doing stuff on the computer here. Okay. So, coming up next, this next poet can make dark so deep and. I'm going to get dirty, but very delicious. Coming up, we have Donnie. If you can find the words, or so I thought. 
a man of thoughts and a man of words and a man of a racing mind suddenly silent. I used to speak a mile a minute to you until the day I realized the only word I could find to describe you is love. Meaning to an immeasurable word. The first time that word has had meaning to me. That is what you give me. You say I seem distant because my jabbering has turned to silence, because my long answers have shortened, but it is not distance that quells my thoughts from their sugar high. It is proximity. It is intimacy. It is an utter lack of words and a mind once full. I want to talk to you. But only one set comes to my mind time and again, one set of words on constant repeat, and they drown out every other sporadic, unimportant thought I can think. I try to tell you what I'm feeling, but all I can articulate is I love you. I love you, 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 I love you. But a conversation must consist of more. Why? Why can't I talk about this? This inexplicable swelling of my breath, this word love, this suffocating weight that I can't get enough of, this word. My breath pershing itself from my being, even when I have none to purge this word that cannot be described, not even by those who know what it means. Words are made to draw out of the minds of others the same things that I'm feeling. So why don't the words exist for this? In exchange, a thought needs to be there for the words to form around it, but there are not enough words in this or any language to describe the crushing pressure, the breaking, the healing, the creative destruction of this sensation, but I will not stop trying. They say that you will know love when you feel it. They say it'll all come into perspective, it'll all make sense, that's a load of shit. It's true, you will recognize it, you'll recognize it as recognize it as this vague, elusive term that you've been taught all your life, but then what? You're just as fucking confused and helpless as you were before, only now you're vulnerable too. I need to make you realize, I need to draw out of your mind this suffocating weight that puts so much strain on my heart that I fear it may not remain intact, but either way, it is better off in your hands, your beautiful, loving hands, than it ever was in mine. And I will dodge this vulnerability, and I will wrap you in my trust like a shock blanket, and I will continue my search. And when I find the words, and I will find the words, I will set them like a crown upon your mind, pulling them from infinity itself, holding more weight than a kingdom. Thank you. Classic shit by Donnie! So does that mean, like, he doesn't have to get license plates for it anymore? What? what? Like, like on a classic car, you don't have to get license plates anymore? No, you still do. No, well, after, after it's so old, you don't, you don't have to get plates anymore. But you have to get Is that true? I'm gullible enough yeah. to believe that. Is that true? Yes. I used to work at DPS, I know this stuff. All I know What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? Okay, so up oh. next. So Element 615 says, This guy is the reigning poppy of They Speak Youth. Slam the ra reigning what? Slam, okay, whatever. It's like, the, <laughs> you pull the string. I'm paraphrasing. You pull the string, the Joe B says, I thought he said the reigning boppy. Yes. I thought, I ain't boppy, <laughs> yes. like that? That's what he said. Oh. <laughs> it's, those, those are my words. I boppy. I would never come up with that. I boppy, like that? Like that? You do, you do it better. I okay. can't do that. Thank you. Or like a poppy. Song. I'm not gonna do that. Okay, <laughs> so coming up next, we have Christopher Michael. <laughs> I think he's trying to say slam pappy for they speak okay. youth slam. Okay. Yeah. I like the poppy better. No eye poppy with the kids. <laughs> I find myself so fascinated with time travelers and their gadgets, I'm beginning to think the windows of my soul must be made of hourglass. Jules Verne in the time machine. Emmett Brown in the flux capacitor. Doctor Who and the TARDIS. Mr. Peabody, his pet boy Sherman, and the Wayback Machine. 
But in the annals of human literature, there's one that stands out to me more than any other. Superman. Remember when his love, Lois Lane, was laid lifeless by Lex's attempt to trigger an earthquake by igniting a nuke? Well, I believe at this moment, he could have bit a brick of pure kryptonite and used it to fly around the Earth. And after his sheer momentum would have changed the direction of the Earth, the resulting counteraction would have effectively stalled the Earth's engine. I fucked that whole poem up. I'm going to start back over. I'm going to go in the Wayback Machine and start over. Bam! Oh, that just means I should do the poem I meant to do. It was meant to be. Yeah, this is new shit. New shit! Somebody pissed me off and I wrote this. I see I sit in the sea of observers, drowning in discomfort. Tired of hearing the same political rant week after week, an endless wave of pain poured in my ears as my brain needed even more washing. I paid to be entertained, but as I sit in this audience, my suffering feels like the falling cascade of straight fists rearranging the jawline of rainbows, walking home from a late night bar hop or job or study session. Maybe, maybe the fists mistook themselves as raindrops beating against the sun, thinking that they might be the reason for the rainbow. My fear of hearing your next words feels like the anxiety of a woman not knowing whose victim she'll be. It feels like the frustration of ovaries not being balls enough to bounce through Y chromosome engineered ceilings. Maybe if they were a little funnier, the glass ceiling would crack up a little. My ass in this chair and the pounding of my heart feels like bombs over Baghdad, over Israel, over Palestine, over innocence, over women, children, and men who want no part of your verbal shrapnel. This constant rehashing is giving me a headache, like unwanted bullets to the head of some random black boy the local military exterminated because his skin dug too deep in the melanin pool, like black is running wild in its open season to keep the population under control, like the pavement needs a little more tar, baby, they're smoking Negroes like the tar and menthol, like being 13% of American children is 10% over the limit, like they're tired of us, like I'm tired of hearing your tragedy. I squirm in my chair, because my ego has convinced me this chair is a safe space. Like my mind is too privileged to be cleaned of my ignorance. Their mouths gun me down with guilt, like trigger, like trigger, a warning. This mic is a safe space, safe for my freedom of speech, safe for me to fight anxiety, fear, depression, safe for me to remind you that we talk about how gay we are because there are still folks who want to beat it out of us. We talk about the homeland because it's still on fire, crumbling and decorated with death. We talk about how woman we are because there are still men who think they own us. We talk about how black we are because despite our contribution to the world, we are still two second class, three fifths of a citizen. A citizen. We need this space. We own this space. You need that chair. You are renting that chair. So sit in it and learn something other than yourself. was a badass pin flip I've ever heard one. That was Christopher Michael, everyone. There's actually a website called The Wayback Machine, and it has a, a, a history of every website ever developed that's on the internet. It has a record, even if it's not there anymore, it, it has a catalog, and you can go to it. And as if there wasn't enough stuff on the internet already, you go to, uh, I don't know what the actual address, but just look up the Wayback Machine and you'll find it. Every single website. Every single one. Just about every single one. I found my old um, uh, MySpace page that I don't have anymore. It's there. Okay, I'm going to look that up. The Wayback Machine. The Wayback Machine. There's, just, there's already enough stuff on the internet. Okay. But why would you even do that? Why would you spend money on a server and... It's ridiculous. That's everyone, just everyone has their niche. They have I guess. Their life. Okay, okay, so coming up next... We have another new voice. Ah, the forest is ripe with a new voice. No! That's all I had to say. <laughs> yes, Hot Tamale, we have a new voice. Okay, who is this Mr. Person, you ask? Coming up to the stage for the first time ever here at Kick Butt Coffee Spoken and Heard.
on Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. August Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. August 24th, 8.31 p.m. Mark your calendars, people. We have Stacy. Getting a rare behind the scenes glimpse of your kickbutt coffee. Yeah, it's and while we get the music set up, don't forget to get take advantage of the drink specials. Let's see if you remember. Pop quiz. Oh come on, people. You weren't listening earlier? Thank you, that's one. What's the other one? Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary, last one. Summer Hells. No, no, no. Almond Joys is my drink special. That's my very special drink. But Summer Hells, Mimosa, and Bloody Mary, all $3. Go over to Alex. She will hook you up. Don't touch hot tamale special. Oh, God. I just realized how that sounded. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm Stacy. Really, Mike? <laughs> Short. Mike? <laughs> She's look, not a hobbit. Look, look at, at her. her and the mic at the same time. That way you I can, can do this. No, you can't. All right. I think that's good. Yeah. All right. So this is my first time. If I yell at you, I apologize. Get a little into my phone. Thank you. No? Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right. This uh, is titled Blue. Can you hear me? Because I'm filtering down, leaving the pieces behind that my mother adored. She said, I was a breath of fresh air. Well, I need that air now. So where's my air now, Mom? Except only being discharged and exhaled into the atmosphere because I'm lying here dissembling while the stars laugh and say it's too fucking bright up here. We wake up, we breathe, remember everything, and go back to sleep. We wake up. We breathe, remember everything, and go back to sleep. We wake up, we breathe, remember everything, and go back to sleep. We wake up, we breathe, remember everything, and go back to sleep. But what if I don't want to sleep? What if I don't, what if I want, don't want to pry open my eyes to see the dawn just to force myself to forget everything because I remember every single day after that I just didn't want to wake up when the walls just seemed friendlier with the sun dripping down them. I was progressively progressing downwards then up. My bed had become a sea of sand burrowing me in, poking and nudging in places where I just didn't want them in. But I thought it'd be better than fighting. So why not just let it go? Why not just succumb to the ocean and free drift into the abyss of nothingness? Because, because I almost did, you know, finally let go. Let my mind click down, floating down and down and down, being a second away from plunging to the darkest black floor, standing, looking up towards the signs of sunshine drifting by above me, and I thought, they don't even know I'm here. To think about that, that they don't even know you're 
you're here. Just completely alone, wanting completely to be done with the things that make things unclear. Feeling like we're all nothing here, because we're all nothing but just a step away from being forced to our own fate. Standing by ourselves because time just can't wait. Just one second more for that person that we adore. To hold our hands and we bow down and say farewell. I'll love you forever and more. Yeah, because we're all alone when we go. We're all alone when we go, so why not just choose when to close the curtain and say farewell to the show? And I would have, you know, chosen my fate if it just wasn't for that darn blue jay soaring above me, above those shimmering waters, gliding making his way towards the sun. Her phone. She forgot it and I was like, shh. No, just kidding. I don't get it. It's just, never mind. What are we not to get? I don't know. Somebody, somebody new phone. And she phone. left her phone here and I said, no, just go on. All right, all right, I don't want the show. We love you, Rennie B. Yeah. Oh, remember that. No, we don't. <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> all right, what is coming up next? What is coming up uh, next? Uh, That's the name of the poet. What is? What is? There you go. Get it? No, actually, I th I think uh, the, the the whispers that have been going on is that there's a feature coming up. Is there? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I know. So, go ahead. Go it is it. that time, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it is. Our feature time. Feature. So, coming up next, this pint-sized ball of fury. This wonderful, wonderful poet that's coming up next can they can put so many pieces of work. Yeah. This well, is how amazing I'm, I'm, she is. Unlike you. <laughs> See, this is how amazing she is because I can't put words I'm together to figure out describe what her. Trying to say. <laughs> All right. Well, the powerhouse of poetry coming up next to our stage is our feature, ladies and gentlemen, and she will blow you away. Coming up next, we have the amazing, the stunning, the talented. The gregarious, the optimistic, the I'm just going with What you said. I'm just going with his thesaurus description. Give it up for Mallory Gray! by the ash I was living in and my outsides were covered in bruises that were self-inflicted. You said, Mallory, you're beautiful. God damn, you're beautiful. I told you to shove it, for I didn't know how to take a compliment, but <laughs> I didn't know how to take a compliment. 
My friend Webster over here, well, he never told me the definition of beauty. It never came through my lips or my ears. Sorry. I'm going to be honest, I have nerves today, and I've been thinking about this all day, so thank you for making me nervous. We're here for you. We love you. Get it. I told you to shove it, for I didn't know how to take a compliment, because no one in my life ever told me the definition of beauty. Ah, oh, fuck you, goddammit. <laughs> you know what, we're going to start off with another one because I don't want to do that one right now. I'm on a bus. I sit three seats behind you and I stare into the back of your skull like I can see through those black luscious curls and tell exactly what your mind is thinking. I read your body movements like the old man reads the newspaper in this very coffee shop, tilting his head with interest, not worrying about what everyone else is thinking of him. I don't know you and you, well, you don't know me and that's fine because right now I'm just daydreaming. I don't know where you're from or where you're headed to, but right now, I'm going to pretend like I know everything about you. Your name will be Philip, other known as Fifi. You were born in New Orleans where you lived with your family. You weren't just another African-American tree. Your mother works at a flower shop down the block from y'all's yellow brick house with a swing on the front porch. She is passionate for all of those flowers in that small room. When spring comes, flowers aren't the only thing that blooms. She wipes the sweat from her head as she prunes roses outside with a face filled with excitement. for she wouldn't rather be anywhere else in the world but that very spot. She is strong. She's got the bones of a junkyard dog willing to stand up for a fight because that woman, well, she knows her rights. For her, there's no Prince Charming to come home to, but that's fine. She's got you, your one and only son, that too. And since you've been young, you've been one hell of a mama's boy, learning to ride your bike at the age of five. Why? Well, just like me, you're a night bike rider trying to fly, reaching so high to just touch the sky, elbow deep in pools of galaxies, dissecting the stars like you'll find the seven seas. You were that boy that grew constantly, outgrowing your shoes every other week, coaches watching your every move, begging and praying you just try on one damn shoe. But you, well, you were too good for them because you had better things to do, like long walks with no destination sitting in coffee shops for hours on end, working, while everyone else was sleeping because you liked to play in the planet's playgrounds when everything was at peace, building empires and cities, and in front of your eyes, your hands. Your hands would make it all go away as if God was tattooed on your two palms, hands that were used and sometimes even abused because you refused to set down your guitar more than a couple times, strumming until your phalanges bled and no one could stop you because you were always at the climax of the song and if they stopped you now then you just have to keep going on hands that would shake like the bl the winds of a blizzard night and like those nights you'd have to give your ten digits time to settle maybe they shaked because you were aching to hold on to a new girl but it just never it never felt right perhaps she held on too loose or too tight or maybe maybe she'd even try or maybe you just hated saying goodbye you had your fair share of them, and they always left you with the question, why? Your life started to flash before your eyes, but you still step, stayed in contact with your number one love, your mama. You call her every Wednesday night. As I sit here on this bus trying to sum up the rest of your life, the bus comes to a stop. You stand up, and I shout out without thinking, see you around, Fifi. You turn around with a question in your eye, and you say, See you around, Mallory. <laughs> la, 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 la. Okay, this is a uh, new shit. New, new shit. shit. Okay. That better not be alcohol. Oh, it's water. <laughs> I'm gonna call this, uh, I'm gonna call this Stepford. My sister helped me name this one, so shout out. Boop. Shout out. <laughs> Sorry, I got a mosquito bite. I kiss him on the cheek as he leaves. He says, he loves me one last time as he pulls out of the drive. I know this. It's just another one of his lies. 
My stomach has grown used to drinking the paranoid thoughts to sleep cocktail. After cocktail has become Monday morning, I have been trained to be silent. I have been trained to close my eyes. As a child, I would close my eyes and crawl underneath the kitchen table. It made it seem as if they weren't fighting, that if you can't see the kitchen plates being shattered on the floor, then maybe you can mend them later with your I'm sorry's and please blame me's. I have been trained to not see things. That if you keep running from the truth that is right in front of you, you'll find yourself engulfed in someone else's shoes, absorbing up all of their own issues. For example, oh my god, have you seen how much weight Cousin Susie's gained? Every morning, it crosses my mind that maybe, that maybe it's me, that I somehow am disappointing, that I look different from when he took my hand and said I do. I mean, he can barely look at me. I can't see how this is so hard because she looks just like me. I've been trained to be clueless that I can't smell another woman's perfume when he walks in the room. It's funny how he thinks he's so good with keeping secrets. Secrets has filled every room. One, one second, let me pour another glass of champagne. The bubbles that slide down my throat help forget all of this temporary pain. The bubbles settle. And the same thoughts that were there move back in. My mind has been transformed into a temporary living facility where patients are moving constantly. Thoughts of self-doubt, of why, of what could I have done right the past year. All of my sentences have started with, I'm sorry. Before it's even heard, I've been trained to think it's my fault that I'm the reason why you always go to work on Sundays. Running doesn't make a loveless marriage go away. I have been trained to share. The phrase, sharing is caring, has confused me. I never expected for it to include me. When was the deal made that she gets the better side of you, that she gets the fun-loving holding on to you, and what does that leave me? Nothing. I get the complain about your bullshit you, the sweetie, make me a sandwich you, the I don't want to talk, I'm tired you. He is always tired. Tired of having to look at me, even though he does this so rarely. I have been trained to paint a smile on my face, to look like the cookie cutter stay home wife, to tie a flowery apron around my waist in hopes that no one realizes that I don't even bake. I don't eat sweets because gaining weight is practically a sin. I must look as petite as can be, then maybe he'll notice me. Look how slender I am. How can I not be appealing? I didn't used to think like this until I discovered that my husband, well, he likes women with low self-confidence. I didn't used to act like this. I used to be a straightforward kind of gal. No one used to put words in this mouth. I didn't used to be like this. No one controlled my every motion, every movement, every thought. I didn't used to be a tied down woman. I used to be free, but now, I've been trained to have this ball and chain connected to me. My ankles have become worn from crawling and crying and trying to pry these chains off. This is what it's like living in misery. I just heard his car engine outside. I better go warm up his dinner plate. Nice. What do you think so far? So, Hot Molly here has the magical tip jar. It's magic. Yes, it's magic. Because you go all the way around the room, and it's going to fill with this wonderful, incredible green stuff that folds for an incredibly Talent feature, ladies and gentlemen, Mallory Gray. And no Mark. coupons, people! Aww. Dead presidents! Dead presidents! So she can buy us beer later! Woo! Yeah. Dwayne! What up, DD? We'll get a little more upbeat. This is called Be Mine. 
And I believe that everyone in the world is constantly searching for someone, and this is just all those people who are searching for someone. Sorry, I'm a really thirsty person. <laughs> Go to sleep, little baby. Go to sleep, little baby. You and me in the Dale makes three. Don't need nobody but my baby. Be my security blanket. Wrap your grandmother's yarn around me, smother me in the smells it holds, the smell of home, of love, of belonging to something. Can you belong to me? Like, not temporarily, but can you become family? Be my white flesh peach, pick me in spring. Fill my soft peach skin, don't push too hard because I bruise real easy. On some days, you might bite into me and I may not be all the way right. I may be in a mood and cahoots might be lost in thought because I think way too much about you, but no worries here. Leave me on the counter and by the next day I'll taste just right. I'll become your peach pie, be my creek bed under the bridge where I linger, where I draw with picture where I, where I draw with chalk on the inner thigh walls, pick up my river rocks. The river rocks of my beating heart, skip them nine or ten times on the waters of my thoughts till they sink down those thoughts and settle near my chest again. See what I see. See the beauty in the weather driftwood. Do you see the pictures they are painting? How the sound of cars singing above us sounds so soothing. Will you play in the waters with me? Be my bubble bath with candles, the bath salts that tickle my feet, make me feel squeaky clean with every bubble that pops on my cheek. Wash my skin with your words, with your thoughts, with being able to look at me and see through every bit of paint that covers me. When you see my wrinkly toes, I hope you smile. I hope we laugh at the thought of wasting our energy on our insecurities. Can you lather me, not once, but twice? Be my cypress tree. Can I have some of your leaves for keeps? Now I'm just saying I'm a climber. No matter how challenging or how many branches are in the way, no obstacle will stop me from confronting my fear of being Lazy on Sundays, can I relax under your canopies, take catnaps on piles of leaves, carve my name in your ribs made of bark, will your branches hold me when it gets dark? When the, le when the wind blows, I hope your leaves whisper to me, I hope you watch over me protectively, be my Ryan's belt, my favorite constellation aligned in the sky, the three stars that make my smile shine so bright. I'll look up to you for answers, for questions, for acceptance. As long as I can find you at the end of the night assures me that I'm still sane, that I haven't gone crazy yet because my mind goes as strange at night. Remind me that this planet is beautiful and how I should spend more time appreciating it. They tell me that even though I may be small, I am still seeing the smallest, sh the smallest stars shine bright, even in daylight. Be my back road drives at night. The path I take to clear my mind with every sharp turn, I feel just a little bit more alive. Keep me guessing, guessing where this road will go, guessing of choosing left or right or if I'm already short on time, I've been told. But all roads come to a dead end. But this life is just temporary. Temporary like the car I drive. So I guess I'm just going to keep driving till the engine dies. I'll throw it in fifth and drive straight through this starry night. Be my sunrise. Be my sunset. Be my sunrise. Be my chocolate cake slice. Be my fossils. Be my scars. Look into these old soul eyes of mine. Be mine. This one, um, rehab. Woo! It's not about me, so don't think I'm all crazy or anything. I am, but not that kind of crazy. Okay. In the bed of a hospital, you see four white walls. You see an IV bag that slowly drips like rain in the summer and plastic flowers in the corner that I'm collecting dust for eight months now. You see nothing. How did you get here? 
Was it the needle your boyfriend stuck in your left arm at the age of 15? Or was it ODing in the red curvy slide of an abandoned park at the age of 21 because you seem to not be able to remember anything between? Your memory has become a dangerous thing. Blacking out anything that seems dirty, anything that has caused you the slightest amount of pain has been swept away. Swept away like the leftover residue of your cocaine. These sheets are so white, why must everything in here seem so bright? Can someone tell me how I got these stitches on my side? These straps, these straps that bound me, bound me to this bed that has swallowed me under the bed sheets. You look outside, treetops, so second or third floor, easy jump, right? You're still having your invincible thoughts. You used to be invincible. You used to be a lot of things. You used to go days without sleep, without coffee, thinking you had this chemical in your body that some great gods might have seen. The only option you have now is the choice to eat. Well, until they take that away too, you hear talk of this tube that portrays your insides, filling it up unwillingly. So much of this seems like a dream. The nurse walks in. You say, when will you be ready to check out, check out like a summer camp gone wrong, like you can return home to a fresh mown front lawn, like this is the first time you've asked this question that aches inside you for so long. She turns around and smiles, a smile you're only supposed to see from your mother. She says, baby girl, your rehab's gonna be a little long. up all over town. I sometimes don't know what to do. I want to run, cry, and jump into your arms, searching for the answers of the universe. I want to know everything. Why the sky recedes right when it's starting to get pretty. Why sunrises come way too early. Why I can never be satisfied with the answer just because my mother, you raised me this way. Always searching for what could be on the other side of the problem. Always problem solving for what for what areas you lack in. You teach me the way of beauty. How looks aren't everything. The soul knows more than the eyes will ever see. You taught me the power of being able to sprinkle glitter on ugly things, transforming them with my positive energy. At times, we're just friends, it seems. Prettier than a picture, you're an example of natural beauty. No, no way, you're my cover girl. I look up to you figuratively and physically, and I'll always stay this way. Tammy, I love you like crazy. Don't cry, because your baby girl will always come home, because she's your baby. Um, and this is um, awareness, I guess, for mental disease. Um, recently, I've, now I've, become, I've come informed that one of my friends who I grew up with, um, she's schizophrenic. And like any other mental disease, you can't see it from in, in front of you, you know? It's not like they are covered in bruises or something. It's a disease and it's painful, but it's all in your head, so... This is a shout out to her and I hope she's doing good. I used to love railroad tracks. I would walk on them as a child, used to be invincible. When it came to balancing on them, I thought I was USA's next acrobat. The steel under my feet never scared me, more excited me, made me feel daring, like death could never lay a print on me. The idea of hopping on a train one day was always in my dreams, to pack up like the boxcar children and take off to a faraway land, leave all troubles behind, and just be gone. I used to love railroad tracks. I can't look at them the same anymore. The same tracks I once played on 
the ones I practice daydreaming on, the ones that aren't even 300 yards from where I became me, those worn wood tracks, are where Lily tried to commit suicide last week. She wasn't daydreaming. She wasn't attempting to go to a faraway land. She just wanted it all to stop. She wanted the screeching sound of brakes embedded in her brain. Lily has schizophrenia. It's hard for people to understand a mental disease. You can't see it or touch it. You don't rebandage the wound daily or get the cast removed. There is no use for a wheelchair. It's all chemical. It's in your puzzle of your brain. People push them aside like they are elderly, like they aren't cute and cuddly, like they want a refund for some new cute puppy for Lily. She's made up of four. Now, I'm no doctor, but the Greek roots of schizophrenia is to split the mind. The term rather means splitting of mental functions. And for my sweet Lily, there is her four functions. There is childlike Lily, the one who smiles at bubbles and laughs at anything that includes the word turd. This is my favorite <laughs> Lily. She is so innocent and pure. She's like a daisy that shouldn't be picked. There's normal Lily. This is the same one I knew back in third grade. She's so smart. Not smart, but she is a genius. She read books like they were water, and she was a fish that would swim right by on to the next one. But even in third grade, you can tell that genius-like qualities can have their downfalls. Then there is Daring Lily, the one that makes up for the lack of confidence in the first two and walks right on stage to sing, to act, to leave it all on the state, all on the table because gambling is way too easy. Please, sweet girl, now don't bet on everything. And then, lastly, lastly, there is Dark Lily. I can't vouch much for this one because Dark Lily won't come out in the presence of others. She'll stay hidden in the murky waters up. She'll stay hidden in the murky waters of swamps before you'll set eyes on her. This Lily, she has the most power, the most control, the most evil that rests in her being. All fall under, fall all fall under Dark Lily's file. She makes her do these things, dangerous things, things even daring Lily wouldn't even consider betting on, tells her to stand on those railroad tracks, to silence the other three Lily's screams, to stand there waiting for those screeching breaks to make all of those thoughts in her precious little head to freeze in time, just stop. Lucky enough, cops still drive around at three in the morning. This is the second time they have stopped her. Lily, I'm sorry. I'm sorry we were the kids that got picked on. I'm sorry that you've always felt so different, that it was a struggle to smile every day back then. I'm sorry I can't go back in time and change everything. I would take all of your pain away in a heartbeat. Lily, please, I just don't want you to succeed. you in your toes, making you giggle for no damn reason. And keep it up until you're 102. I hope you smile like a baby was just born and all you can do is just sit there and adore that new living creature until your eyes get sore. Come back in a few hours for just a little bit more. I hope you do more than you say, for words can only get you so far because the more you talk, the more you lose your process of thought and the more you ramble on, the quicker you forget your last thought. Then you're lost in a world of thoughts and words and they're all tangled up and they can't be undone. I hope you don't think too much. Like she said, don't think too much. You're gonna suffocate your feelings. Don't think too much. Come outside and play. Don't overanalyze your decisions. I hope you have open ears. Listen to the voices that are hard to hear. Lay on the ground and talk to the ants. 
trust me, they have a lot to say. Instead of blinding them with the magnifying glass, take them out to lunch. I hope you sing like you're in the shower and you can't hit any of the keys so you scream even louder. Sing like you're in the middle of the forest and no one can, hit, see, no one can hear you but the leaves on the trees. Sing like you have something worth singing. I hope you have big dreams. Don't be afraid to lasso the galaxies. you ain't pretty. So let's see what these Botox infested magazines have to say to me. Practically the same thing except with instructions on how to enhance or shrink all of your body parts of course so is bigger, better, or smaller, saner. Oh wait, it's depending on exactly what you're looking at, right? If I turn around, you want to see the curves, the hourglass of bubbly champagne you want to crack open and cheers to. On the side, you're supposed to gander at the lumptious double D's that are so perky, the flat stomach and the booty that sticks up just a bit to get a few smacks in, correct? All of these expectations drive me crazy. Do you know what you're doing to these ladies? To their souls? To the struggle of trying to satisfy every guy that walks by with the wink of their eye because they believe they have to stoop that low to be considered pretty? Do you know what's in their minds from picking themselves apart of the things they simply don't like? Well, here's mine. I'm short. My thighs are way too big. My eyebrows are like tiny calipers. My toes are aliens from another planet. My eyes squint all the time because I can't stop smiling. And on some days, I want to carve my stomach to make it look like the girls in the magazines. On some days, I wish I could change just about everything. This is what goes through my mind daily. You ask the question, am I pretty, am I pretty, am I pretty, but can so many yeses satisfy a lady's poor self-esteem? Can it make up for all of those years of being bullied will make looking in the mirror seem easy? When do we start sounding so crazy, ladies? When do we lose the definition of beauty and replace it with not good enough? The comparison never ends. She's skinnier than me. Her face is so breathtaking. Her legs are so smooth. How did she become so beautiful? God damn it, stop it. No one becomes beautiful. You're simply just beautiful. You're every curve, every blemish, every flaw. You're every flaw because when it comes to your body, there is no such thing as flaws. Your every, <clears throat> your every bump is perfection because you were molded that way. Stop making our kind sound so weak. You are strong. You are beautiful. You are thoughtful. <sighs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> One second. It's gonna come. It's coming. Wait for it. There it is. I am beautiful just the way you are. You are beautiful just the way you are. That's right. You are strong, you are beautiful, you are thoughtful. Just gonna make out with the mic for one second. Thinking about it. That's pretty good. this after? Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Alright, good. Shit, I'm sorry. Yay! That was no, 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 we're not done. We're not done. Wait, wait. We just gotta go back. I'm so sorry. Under God the damn cliff it. notes there. Shit, pisses me off, my bad. My bad, my bad. Beauty's knee infections. I don't like the ball for it. Yeah, get out my head. Yeah, shut up. You man. <laughs> yeah, you man. <laughs> okay. Stop with your testosterone and shit. 
You and your balls. You and your package. <laughs> I'm just gonna... We need no hand to hold us a hand. We need no hand to walk us across the street at night. To protect us from our own thoughts and our minds. Because I can tell you from me, I walk the streets at night with a knife by my side. Because that's all I intertwine with. I've learned you cannot find true happiness in another person. Because they are bound to let you down. It's being human. But that happiness, that beauty, that all, it's all in you and your knapsack of your soul. You are strong. You are beautiful. You are thoughtful. I ask you to stop picking yourself apart, to stop the constant construction on your exterior, put away the building, the building crane and the chainsaw, the hard hat and the tools, for there is no need for these useless things. You are already a breathtaking skyscraper. You are high in the sky and no one can touch you. No one should ever bulldoze a masterpiece. You are strong. You are beautiful. You are thoughtful. Look at us in the Austin skyline. Every building a different color, a different design, a different shape. Everyone beautiful in their own way. Beauty is imperfection and you remember that from my dismay. You are strong. You are beautiful. You are thoughtful. You are strong. You are beautiful. You are thoughtful. You are strong. You are beautiful and you are thoughtful. Just please, open your eyes. Done. <laughs> Seriously. And here is her fabul tip jar. Right there. Beer on Mallory. Hit her up for a beer. Not literally. Good God. You're gonna have to hand back your black card. You're gonna hand you're gonna have to hand your card back. It, it, it's on. On. Not literally, figuratively. Hello. Okay. So I'm just gonna come up here and monopolize the mic because our watch host. The, watch the cable. Yeah, I know I'm watching it. I'm gonna just come up here and monopolize the mic because our host didn't jump up as fast as I did. Ah. Just remember, drink specials, bloody marys, summer hells, mimosas. They're not just for bridal showers anymore. All three dollars. And no, they do not go into go cups, so don't ask. So here we have with his handy dandy iPad. And people have asked before. Yes, I know. To go? People have asked to get their bloody Mary to go. It's like, <laughs> that's illegal. We can't do that. So you're going to have to drink it here. And here we have our host with his handy dandy iPad. <laughs> the Godfather. Yes, I have to do it because I know it pisses him off to no limit. The Godfather of Spoken and Heard. Ah, too bad, I'm going to kiss myself. No. This guy. <laughs> Element 615. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our feature one more time. Make some noise for Mallory. Make some noise. Make some noise. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now, um, please, if you if you really enjoyed her and your hands do get tired of clapping, please see fit to the only thing what I... Her, what she's always, being strangled. What, <laughs> what always works to keep... If your hands are sore from clapping, what helps with the pain is taking money out of your wallet and giving it to her in her tip jar. That is a total lie, but you'll feel so good. The karmic energy will alleviate the pain. Get away from me, Michael. The tip jar is over there. Get off the stage! Damn it. Why does he always do that when you're up there? Because he's uh, he's Clifford, the big red co-host. Oh my God, ambient awkward energy. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the next performer coming up to the stage. Make some noise for Madeline. <laughs> Next, 
ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Madeline. She is coming up. Oh, wait, wait, oh. Uh, is the is the is the son of Louisiana coming up next? Are you? Just so I can get it ready. The son of yeah. Louisiana. It is is what's his name in front of you up next? What's his name in front of me? Yeah, that guy. Yeah, that was him. Okay, wait, hold up. That is the name given to him. Oh, God. Here we go. This. Okay, hold on. All right, so I'll tell you what. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to bring up a poet real quick. Then I'm going to bring up a poet real quick. Then I'm going to bring up a poet real quick. Is that all right with y'all? Uh, it's red. Okay, here we go. Uh, you love you, Ruby. Yeah, if, yeah, I suppose. Oh, I ladies and gentlemen, get ready for the next boy coming up to the stage. Make some noise for DJ Jazz White. <laughs> One, you heard? <laughs> How are you guys doing tonight? It's a beautiful thing to be in a town where we have poetry on a Sunday, and at times it's hard to find a place to sit down. That's a good problem to have. I got poetry. You can hate me like no hates yes. You can hate me like number two hates the best. You can hate me like the cursed hate the blessed. You can hate me like your ex is ex. You can hate me like I'm your ex is next. You can hate me like Chris Hansen hates a predator. You can hate me like the predator hates Arnold. Oh. You can hate me like Arnold hates the gooch. You can hate me like lies hate the truth. You can hate me like 41 hates broccoli. You can hate me like definitely hates probably. You can hate me like I hate meth. You can hate me like meth hates Joe Button. You can hate me like budding hates death. You can hate me like Tic Tacs, hate bad breath. If what I do doesn't do it for you, it's simply not for you. If you hate on me, you're wasting your time. You can sleep through your dreams while I live mine. Sometimes the biggest haters say they love you the most. Say they are supportive, but they shit on your hopes. Like teens and nicotine, they stunt your growth. Say they love you, but I just don't know. Just call me Jonah when you wish me well. Call me a dick, call me Ishmael. Time will tell if I succeed or fail. Till then, I do what I do. And I do it well. Woo. Fail. You are not an option. Can't stop, won't be stopping. Like the Brothers Blues, jazz is on the mission. And hate yourself later if you're not listening. I still believe there's nothing I can't achieve. And just what the hell are you trying to convince me? You say, you got to be more realistic. Fuck it. For me, that means the... Sky's the limit. You hate on me, you're wasting your time. You can sleep through your dreams while I live mine. See, I can brush my haters off like I'm Jay-Z. But Jazzy's biggest hater is Jazzy. Prone to bouts of feeling ennui, hating every word written by me. Two old Muppets in my head talking shit. <laughs> Often they rip on everything I did. See, I set the bar high, and I shoot higher. It's got to be epic. It's got to be fire. This mic cords a fuse, and I'm the lighter. Hate is an infection that will make you see red. If left untreated, hate is going to spread. See, it starts off going outward, 
and then turns inward. Hate's not just a word, it's a sickness. No physician or medicine can cure it. Handle your business, no quick fixes. As for me, call me Babe Truth, cause I'm pointing toward the fences. Thank you guys. I'm Jazz One. One, you heard? All right, and coming up next to the stage. Oh, wait, before you bring me. Okay. Wait, I, I just have one line um, that you might be able to add to that, Jazz. What's that? About, about your comparisons about, like, Chris hates the, cra the cavity creeps. Hmm? <laughs> See, wasn't that worth the interruption? No! no! Yeah, wasn't that worse? Yeah. Worth the interruption? Yeah, it was. Nothing worse than clap. Yeah, <laughs> now life can go on. Brush your teeth, Joby. Shut up, Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Madeline coming up to the stage. <laughs> So here, throughout here's here's this stuff, and this is just some um, disjointed stream of thought stuff. I'm not going to be a performance artist tonight. My skin does not belong to me, and probably never did. If I can sink into innocent gluttony's hands, at having the thick wrapping of my back pinched and pierced and proven once and for all to be as flimsy a human pretense as tofu and patriotism. Imagine my sincere delight as a, t a child touching a cake on the dessert tray at a Mexican restaurant and finding it slide between my fingers and ooze whipped cream where I'd assumed there'd be plastic and it embarrassed my grandparents but the, thick, the end result was still cake on my hands. I wish I could take all of the stray cat and dog souls up in my hands and crush them to my breast and hope we won't all be insulted by the last ditch nature of this action. But I simply cannot think of any alternative in this silly universe. Come to me, come on, into, come vicious and lonely and regretfully insufficient. As long as you come and hold me, twist in my child hands, neurotic with laughter. Sometimes you smile just to stretch your muscles. Sometimes I flex just to remember how strong I once was fall into puddles, into abandonments, just to remember what it feels like to survive. When survival is insufficient, it's time for a soliloquy, and who can resist my acrid, seething confidence? Where we belong is between the folds of eyelids and breath implied in stanzas. We belong stolen sweetly like the ransomed children of Earth inside the futile expectation that once the story ends and the pages run out, it would all have been for something. I have not been able to write honestly for weeks, even surrounded by all the things that make my writing more honest, like coffee and cigarettes and caffeine and nicotine and fucking coffee and cliches shredded and dried up and, and dried and rolled up in paper. People don't like my honesty nowadays, and that makes me want to talk more and say, God damn it. And no, I hated it. And if you want me to care about you, you're going to have to motivate me. I've been molting in the corner of my living room because my insides are, are becoming as hard as my shell. And you can pick your teeth with the flakes. I swear I'd pick my teeth if there were anyone in the world who stood close enough to see that I grind black pepper on my eggs every day. There's a thing. Why is everyone fucking themselves with cigarettes? Let's talk about hard-boiled eggs for a minute. Hard-boiled eggs are what you eat when you have very little time, money, and creativity. I eat two every day with plain black, black pepper and no sriracha or salt or mustard or enjoyment. And sometimes they make your throat dry and are hard to swallow. I'm getting good at choking back breaths that are tasteless with stifled honesty anyway. Maybe hard-boiled eggs don't smell as sexy as cigarettes, but neither does a poet at three in the afternoon on a Sunday when they roll out of bed and risk none of the soul they sharpen against the whetstone on, of forced irony and lines about whiskey and coffee and cigarettes. How about a line about a window? 
How about the way my grammatic integrity is compromised by the way I cannot bear to look out a window at a world where you are nowhere near, so I can merely look at it? I don't like waiting by fucking windows. I talk a lot about Edward Abbey and abandonment and nothing, but I considered while standing perched upon the glass beach, whose ocean was only gravity and height, whose water one does not swim in but plunge into, I decided suicide is far less honest, like poetry, with a whimper instead of a scream. Picasso had a laugh, but I have a scream. I have hard-boiled eggs and blinds over my windows, and I put sugar in my coffee, even though it's not fucking artsy. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Madeline one more time. And coming up next to the stage, make some noise for Steve Quakenbush. Shit. I write to get my truth out. I learn more with each line I type. I'm evolving as I delve into my sanctuary. I share my words and feel emboldened to look closer at the thoughts and ideas that have framed my house of cards. The wind of time blows through the cracks in my winter walls and I feel chilled to the bone at what I don't know. The glaring summer sun has me living in an oven of denial. I'm rebuilding as fast as I can yet I am unable to see any progress. I long for completion, but I understand that this abode is to be my mausoleum, finished upon my death and a work for others to look at. The changes in my plans are an affront to conformity, yet the need for the changes only become apparent when I have made up my mind as to the right way to do things. Life is funny that way. It's all a mystery until you think you have it figured out, and then the truth is revealed and you are changed yet again. The building and I are as one, constantly in a state of change. World crashing down, questions asked, answers already known, folly of foolish ideas, woke up causing pain where it shouldn't have been, growing and learning lessons I should have already known, the need for constant affirmation, sinking accolades and spades, I didn't think I would be back here again. But here I sit, listening to a litany of charges, guilty of each, no sense running. That rushing sound is my past coming, coming to, take, to make me pay for all my conceited dreams. Dreaming of a different me, doing the same old things and yet expecting change. Change my mind like being stuck on step nine of a 12-step program. 12 steps stumbling, faced with true stomach grumbling. Having a dubstep reaction to my insecurity passions, my insecurity passions, hitting repeat, got led for fear. Like I'm super glued in place, can't stand to see my face. Face the truth, head, head on. Hell, you're grown. Don't hurt the ones you're meant to help. Take the help train, it might help you get sane. Same choices, ethical voices, saying what you already know to do. Shaking your head as the fool inside won't listen to you. Her world has shrunk, having kicked out all others. She worries at the knots that bind her, making sure they don't come undone. Indifference to the truth was always a mainstay from, her early, from early in her childhood. I stare in wounded silence, not knowing how to say what will heal her. I worry as always, as it seems to be worse somehow than ever before. The cracks that were tiny once now are yawning chasms that are filled with tears and, a, and blood. A wobbly, misshapen planet orbiting a dead star. Can she come back from this place? The solitude of her choices trapped her in an agonizing isolation. I see her desperation as she pleads with us that she is right. I see the fear as she plays hide and seek with the truth. An admission of being wrong won't fi would fix it all, but she would shatter the trust she has in herself. She is, after all, the only one left that still believes what was said. As saying it like a mantra has made it a true religion, to deny it casts doubt on the holy message she carries. Tragic in all aspects, she has surrendered and won't be brought back, feverishly clinging to a hope that she will be proven right and hailed as some misunderstood hero. But in her world, the sun can't shine and the wind never brings in fresh air. In her world, the monsters are all too real and they are like ravening beasts pursue her across time and space to exact a revenge. She is tired. I can see it. I smell her fear. 
It's real to her. I can't protect her from the horrors of her mind. Poe-inspired creatures, hulking shadows ever built on causing her harm. If only she could rest and recover. She hangs in the balance between real life and imagination, holding on to fragments of sanity and filling in blanks with strife. Thank you. Gentlemen, give it up one more time, one more time for Steve Wakenbush. All right, and coming back up to the, coming up to the stage, give it up for Scott Vanya. Tune. I'd never seen it before. 
I won't even see it till hours from now when I look back and say, what the hell did I say to those people? Did I believe it or was it just a dream somewhere with 40 people in a room dreaming of rain? It's just a sound, you know, it's just a sound on a window pane when you're driving through traffic late at night and all you want to do is get home to your loved one and feel the tight arms around you. Just the sound of rain, of 40 people in a room listening because somewhere in the middle of it all there's a spring coming up and the moon shining. And if you listen carefully, you can hear the sun coming out tomorrow. And if I pray for anything, let it be that when you rise in the morning, you'll remember somewhere in the middle of your dark night, because the night ain't nothing. Just some place where you go to download or upload what you learned that day to the higher mind. So this song will end, but another poem will come up, and it'll be the same darn string, just played a different way, you know? I think we're coming up on the end here. right into that. You walked right into it. He know I got carpal tunnel in my left arm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the next cool cat coming to the stage. Make some noise for Jack. It is 25 pages long, and I will not read the whole thing. I have underlined some lines that, po that poet Tom, the world poet, helped me pick out. So it might sound schizophrenic. But. Also, that feature was incredible. I don't know if you were all here. Some people left because they're lame. But uh, I don't know where she's sitting. But uh, is she gone? Oh, there she is. Hey. Hey, girl, hey. Um, <laughs> Wolfgang. Uh, this is my self-publishing co company called Anarchy Regardless of Location, as opposed to just in the UK. No one? These my sins I take to death before I do depart. I take them down and count them out and write them on my heart. It was now the hour of night when one could hear the poets thinking, one could hear the beetles crawling, and the cockroaches flying around the yellowed pavement, and I missed my love terribly. Her skin was brown, her eyes were mine, and I flirted shamelessly. What struck me was not the eloqu eloquence of the words we used, but the eloquence of the silence we shared even the silence behind the sound. I leant over to kiss her again. Such pain had she in her mouth, it seemed to want to be sucked up by mine. She felt so small in my arms, like a rifle, like a doll, like nothing at all. For I was alone, but she was the pure air which danced around me like a chorus song, until elixir curled up my mouth. She rarely came and did not come now, I rarely came and did not come now. She rarely talked about my girlfriend and did not talk now. I needed nothing but to lay there and hold, hold tightly, and I was held by her as well, gently as a flower holds a scent, carved her name into my soul in the fetal position with her lower back about where the cord went, complete, finally, complete. I am writing this wide-eyed and I need a cigarette. Where are you, Kennedy? I think on this ashen terrace. 
The thought has crossed my mind dozens of times to write her. What I think I might say is, Dear Kennedy, I love you, I loved you, I will always love you. I hope you are happy. Love, Jack. But I'll never write that letter. The wise man should emulate the fool in reputation only. Because I am a dying baby bird with a Wilhelm scream on repeat twisted around her tether. Distant hymns which roll down the sides of mountains arrest nothing in me. No sweet Bucharest or tithing or swill could awaken me. Dead behind sunglasses at night, dead behind laughter and chasm. I'd met my god, but she didn't approve of my lifestyle. And what struck me out on the tiles of the bathroom abandoned, or in the grassy nexus speaking truth with the moon, was how easy dead was to be. Freedom. I had freedom. Another word for nothing left to lose. I was not loving. I was a collector of love. And this is the most insidious way to be. Bunny was one I felt bad about, but only because I had lied to Bunny. The wise man knows what the fuck's up. <laughs> Buddha. <laughs> He said that shit, motherfucker, yeah. We'll be on that real Swagger to the maximum, in case anyone didn't know. <laughs> Welcome to college. What should a stud like myself do but move through women like rolls of toilet paper? Oh, how I raged against that thought. Oh, how my rage accomplished nothing. My, t my, my father never taught me anything, but that hell is other people and you are my hell. That's a sorry, sorry motherfucker, yeah. I'm editorializing. Honor never yields. Justice is cold and sterile. Love is a one-way emotion. You are alone, Jack. You live and you will die this way. It doesn't matter to anyone but you. Truth is no summer laughter. It does not feel good until it does. Truth is black and silent, like a pot and kettle. It's like the pot calling the kettle black, you know what I'm talking about. There's like several pages that we just kind of deemed a bullshit, so. This is for sale. How much? One dollar. Or, best offer. <laughs> this has all been prelude to a letter. I hope it is better with context. Dear love, I loved you, I love you, I will always love you. I hope you are well. I keep looking around for stories to tell you. I keep making stories. I feel so sick with it, so many stories, and you as deaf as God. If the volcanic Sometimes elusive beating of my heart slips out of waltz time and up into the clouds and crescendos into the very ether, crescendos out of the very flesh, cre crescendos spinning out like an atom in the mud on the side of the highway. Dear love, I pray you feel the tremor. Sincerely, love. He's already packed up. Give it up for Jack Henry! <laughs> Woo! Bye, Element. We love you. I'm not done yet. And I'm yeah, gonna, you are. And I'm going to introduce you, so you shut up and get out of the way. Yeah, I was going to say, 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 I was I'm not doing uh, that. I'd just like to remind the audience I'm here for technical support. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm not That's doing, all. I'm not doing that a little bit. I don't, don't want to get lost in that thought right now. <laughs> oh. 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 We're all yelling. I don't know.
don't know why. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for the next boy coming to the stage. She is one part of the hosting madness that is spoken and heard. And please believe me when I say we cannot do this show without her. Please give it up for Hot Tamale. Freaking movie. I love that. Seriously. First used in 1951. We should remix that. We should. We really should. <gasps> Yeah, it was, okay. it, it was first I, I am going to read a little bit of old shit before I bring somebody up. A little bit oh, of old shit. shit? Yeah, a little tiny dusty dry. What? Okay, send, send it to me. Thank you. Appreciate it much. Okay. Kisses. Yeah, just, uh, no, no, no. It's, it was it's, first used in the... Uh, it's called Enslaved. Okay, no okay, yeah, I know. Old 50s movie. Enslave the body and enslave the mind. The master's whip goes across your back. Frustration turns anger, turns to rage. You cannot treat a human being like an animal in a cage. Beat him down, whip him into submission. Locking up his mind is your mission. You can only beat the beast so many times until the beast fights back. Create the monster and ponder why violence is their only answer. If the tables were turned, he would make you his dancer. Load your guns, lock your doors. You created the monster, and the beast is angry. Hysterical fear that your creation is coming after you. One hates what they fear, so they hold their tradition dear. Handing down like an heirloom, venomous hate, the stink that will clear a room. The beast inside of us is the one we should hate, not the broken, beaten one that we create. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was used in a film called Distant Drums in 1951. The Wilhelm scream is a stock uh, sound effect still used to this day. And you'll hear it in just about every movie when somebody gets shot or it falls down, you hear it. Ah! It's the same guy dying over and over. It's, it's like Star Wars, right? as a lost star. And, and, any movie. And I think audio guys do that on purpose. You know, they just stick it in the movie somewhere. And you'll hear it. And once you get used to that, oh, that's that scream. It's the Wilhelm scream. It's famous. I swear, it's, it, it almost becomes like a drinking game. Of course, you really get you wouldn't get wasted too quickly because it's just only used once or twice in the movie. You're like... But could you imagine if the guy who actually did the voice, the voice talent that actually did that scream originally did it for free? No, I'll just take points on that. You know? <laughs> He'd be a millionaire. Oh, you know? Yeah. By now. But anyway. All right. All right. And people do not forget if the cast register keeps ringing... I keep singing. No, just kidding. No. I'm not going to oh. sing. I'm, no. I'm not going to sing. I'm going to bring up our next performer who does it a whole hell of a lot better than I do. Let me see. Where is he? Is he still here? Uh, Mr. Stone? Paging Mr. Stone? Andrew Stone! Is he still here? Did he split? Oh, there he is! There he is! I did not allow him to tune. Well, no, no, no. It, it's okay. I'll go ahead and go into my Michael Bolton medley. <coughs> <laughs> me, 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 me. No, I'll, I'll sing the Divinals. When I think about you, I what, touch what myself. What was that song Michael Bolton sang that got everybody sick? Um, All of them. <laughs> All of them. Which one? Oh, I think, I don't know. I'm just trying to fill time. Yeah, uh, let me see. Uh, you know what would be even worse? Is if you went onto Spotify one day and you saw Mike talk. Mike Thompson sings Michael Bolton. Oh, God. Yes. Did you see that? That, that, yeah. that, that would be something to slit your wrists by. There's a Skittles commercial. <laughs> there's a Skittles commercial where they go into the orchards, and there's Michael Bolton singing to the Skittles tree. Oh, God. It is, and it's really Michael Bolton singing. That's just scariness. It's hilarious. And see, as a, I mean, he is such a professional. He is outstrapped and ready to go in less than five minutes. Give it up for Andrew Stone. <laughs>
Hey, friends. Hey. Oh, before I forget. Oh. Last month I pressed my CD titled Angels of Mercy. Woo Some people good. here already have it. Thank you all. So it's good. Thank you. And I do take credit card. Ow. Okay. Fancy. <laughs> yeah, say fine This is brand new. And typically what I do when I have new stuff, I take it out of the house anyway and play it and finish it in the performance. We're going to have to give it a shot.
for Andrew Stone. Go ahead, R.E.B. Andrew Stone. There you go. I was waiting for that. Uh, for those of you that know your journey, you will know that reference. All right. Wow. wow, am I that loud? I did that with my mind. Uh, yeah, pull, pull the mic back a little bit. It's too far forward. Yeah, I'll, I'll blame loss and thought on that instead of one of our artists. <laughs> anyway, what do I do now? Night, guys. Everything. All right. So coming up next, uh, let me see. Who is this? Oh, cool. Did you already? My loss and thought. Did you already tell him they're next? Probably not. <laughs> Does he ever? Jeez. Yes. Okay. Go bye bye now. Let go of my microphone. Go away. Like you're staying okay. uh, He's very socially inept, but we love him anyway. All right, coming up next, we have Rose. You are my sunshine. When I'm sad and lonely, I look to you. Your smile and amazing eyes of blue suddenly thrust me from darkness to bubbles and rainbows. I'm flying high, forgetting all my loves. Your smile, laughter, your precious kisses are my nectar. The talks we have, walking hand in hand, make me feel so wise and grand. When you hug me nice and tight, everything in my gloomy world you make right. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. My heart you set free. Such power you have for a little girl of three. They've been here like since before we got here. Okay, uh You were nearly killed. I'm scared now, I know. I feel like I almost got hit by a car. Don't be scared. <sighs> okay. Okay now. Uh, maybe I'll just relax with a Bloody Mary, also three dollars. Don't forget about that. <laughs> Gee, I sound like an infomercial. <laughs> Alright, but coming up next, I will bring up the return, the sequel. The Revenge, no, just kidding, of Misty Rose. Hey, uh, during the premiere of the feature that we had earlier, she was talking about Rhodes, so I thought, okay, I'm going to bring up a poem I've got about Rhodes, even though I've never performed it before, so bear with me, not rehearsed on it. But it kind of applies because even though I graduated high school here in Austin, I live about a thousand miles away. And I'm visiting, and so I was on the roads driving a long way to share these with you. So, any truck, any truckers out there? So, this is for you. It's called On the Road Again, Not Yet There. An inner world purrs past my pain through its promised crystal silence. Shatters as waves of chatter start in a game that bears no real name and cycles no fresh spin and rinse. Jostled shocks wear out my heart. My only present companion in each dip more acrid its rot fails me on higher inspection. A plug stale odor gnaws at me of how to keep the home fires hot. This quandary is tough as jerky. To the office of peace, I give the license and registration for a piston pumping engine. Pen and ink are more creative logging arrested contri contrition too late it's cheating time again ignoring each charged warning sign anode and diode laid current once upon a time to their start as braced rope flares flicker down in line wires cross till the sparks charred and spent dead end by the ways have no chart Half blinded in the horizon sun, all the busy signals hot flash to pull over and find my head, drop that load, get another run. My spirit tried, my lost heart crashed, 
dry cabs hopes in a sleepless bed. When I'm driving the red eye, the radiator springs a leak just too far gone and pressing luck. Can family recall goodbye? I'm half awake biting my cheek, aware of feeling that I suck. Two laned roads send one in reverse, an aged lane leaves me in my state and shared limits, it's turn only, but not for the better or worse. Each full lading bears a due date, played out passion, loves to be free. A cap tops shame on tarnished tubs spinning in another pothole, the rig mired in a dried out rut that on your back way took its toll. Wheels of mine fall flat, that's the rub. Each turn aches of a heartline cut. What really failed the charger to reach the long haul connection? Shield the facts staring in my face while I take a splash of water. The tried and untrue lanes move on. The years and gears slip out of place. I'd rather lose this tread on thought in a hammer to metal day. My tongue's thick on his bitter sip. Cold coffee shakes. The truth got caught. Maybe it's a multi-lane highway, but it's still the same old round trip. That was a huge phone you had. Is that a phone she was carrying? That was like a gigantic smartphone. Oh my god. What, what model is that? <laughs> Jam. Okay. Give it up for Misty Rose. All right. Closing out the night. I cannot think of anyone better to do so than Susan Summers. I'm the closing act. That's a lot of pressure. Woo! Headliner. <laughs> That's right. Well, the headliners always go last. Oh, I didn't know. I would have prepared better had I known. All right, I have two. And neither are long. So I'm... this one's called Temporary Title, Static and Overprocessed. White noise fills our ears. Static to keep us static. Clinging with negative attachment keeps us from thinking. Sanitary grocery marts are super processed, overpriced, modified, sterilized, mutated, free traded, subsidized, exploited, and smell nothing, nothing like food. Where produce tastes like chlorinated water, what we are is what we're eating. If a bug won't eat it, should I? Peaches don't grow in tins. Peaches are fuzzy and warm by the sun, and the juice, when you bite, it runs down your chin. Real tomatoes are red, not that anemic pink, and they taste like summer sunsets. If, only, if our only reality is what we see on TV, our lives are substandard subsistence. We have forgotten we are the stars created from stardust, and created by God, we are mortal gods. This one's called Illusion of Time. We put time in round cages with TikToks for locks and pretend we control the hour and the day. We cannot see our futures, we cannot save today. We spend too much time thinking what happened yesterday? When everything is Googled, there's nothing left to say. We call each other wrong and quickly turn away, ephemeral to affinity. Time flows like living rivers upon the cosmic sea. And who you see within the mirror, it's not you, it's me. Effervescent as a bubbling spring, time's another illusion to track our progress, like footprints made in space. We pretend we are here, but we are really there, beyond the imagined galaxies created by our searching. The act of looking gives us something new to see. And we are not many, only one great spirit race who lives among the stars in the boundlessness of space. 
And uh, the one line about being Googled is from Tom World Poet. Totally stole that line. Totally stole it. <laughs> other fellow host is busy right now, so I'm going to go ahead and close out the show before everybody skedaddles. So we got to thank our feature, Mallory. We got to thank everybody who is here today. And we got to thank Alex, who kept us from not being thirsty. I like that. Kept us fed and not being thirsty. And we got to thank Ernie B for keeping all the electronics together and making us sound good. And what else? Hi. Who are you? Anyway. I'm your dreams, baby. <laughs> Hell no, you're not. Sorry. All right. So dare we close it out? Dare we. Dare we. I, I just feel crazy that way. You have been witness to the best, the baddest open mic in the ATX, spoken and heard live every Sunday night at Kick Butt Coffee Music and Booze. It is not just an open mic. It is a show. It is not a show without each and every one of you. That means you too, Scott. Thank you and good, good night. night.